the song we just sung, Show Me Your Ways, is really about what we're going to learn today. We're starting a new series, and it's learning how to be successful. I know everybody wants to be successful in this life. Well, today we're going to talk about learning to be successful by God's enablement. In other words, God shows us His ways on how we can be successful in this life. We learn by God's enablement. But think about it for a minute, what you would do for God and His kingdom if there were nothing to hold you back, right? No lack of finances, no lack of skills, no lack of experience, no past failures to be fallen back on, nothing to keep you from accomplishing anything. <clears throat> and if you could do anything for God, what would you do? Well, maybe you would go out and do a mission. Go out on the mission field. Maybe you'd start an orphanage. Maybe you'd be just a bold witness for Christ. Or maybe you'd even help start a new church. If there was nothing to hold you back or get you in the way, what would you do? Think about that. And as we begin our series today on learning how to be successful, I think it's important that we learn from God the story of Moses. And how God will enable us for his ministry, and we base it on the story of Moses. <clears throat> and you see, as long as we rely on our own wisdom and personal skills, we're never going to accomplish for God what, he, what we could accomplish if we began just to totally rely on him instead of ourselves. Amen. And we can learn from the story of Moses what it means to fully rely on the enabling power of Almighty God to see us through. And I think that we'll find that Moses, like most of us, had to learn the hard way. Amen. Amen. Now, D.L. Moody uh, said that Moses spent 40 years thinking he was somebody. <clears throat> he spent 40 <clears throat> years thinking he was nobody. <clears throat> Moses spent 40 years discovering what God can do then with a nobody. And we don't want to waste the rest of our lives to learn that same lesson that Moses did. <clears throat> so let's take a few moments to learn how God can then enable us by using Moses as our example. And the first thing we're going to talk about is that God will get our attention. Yes, He will. <laughs> Now, if you can recall the story about Moses killing the Egyptian who was mistreating the Jewish slaves. Well, Moses had to flee for his life, and he settled down in a place called Midian. And at that place, he got married. He lived there for many years, but we're not really given too many details about his life there. But watch this. One day, an amazing thing happened to Moses. And we'll go now to the Word of God, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. It says, One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, which is the mountain of God. Verse 2. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire in the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement, and through, though the bush was engulfed in flames, it never burned up. Verse 3, this is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? i got to go see it. And when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called him from the middle of the bush, and he said, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. The Lord said, don't come any closer. He said, take off your sandals because you're standing on holy ground. Now there are three particular things we can learn here about how God gets our attention. First of all, God will appear in the ordinary. Now what could be more ordinary than a bush, right? I wonder how many different times Moses walked past that same bush and didn't even give it a, a moment's thought. But on this day, God was 
trying to get Moses' attention. So what did he do? He sent an angel to appear as a blazing fire inside this bush that Moses had walked past many times. And God is always setting bushes on fire, but it's only to those who are really willing to listen to for God's voice who are going to notice him calling out of one of those bushes in our life. Now, most of the time, God speaks to us in the ordinary, whether it be through some event or through another person or through some encounter that we've had along the way. So if we want to hear the word from God, we have to begin approaching life with a mind and a heart that's focused on listening to his voice. What bush has God set on fire in your life lately? Now, how else does God get our attention? Well, secondly, God is going to present himself to us. And how do we illustrate this? Well, I'd like to tell a little story about a girl named Jill. Now, she worked at a printing business. She was in college, but she worked there part-time. And one day, the boss was surprised when Jill ordered some wedding invitations for herself. She had long maintained with, uh, with the boss that God would have to speak to her out of a burning bush before she would get married to anybody. And her boyfriend's name was Alan, so the boss said, well, Jill, why did you find, like, I know Alan's been asking you to marry him for a long time, why did you finally accept his proposal? Well, Jill explained that one day as she was leaving work, she was walking towards her house and she saw an old dead shrub in flames on in the side of the road. A, an old bush was burning up. And from a hiding place nearby in a deep, low voice, her friend Alan called out, Jill, Jill, I want to marry you. It, it's me, it's Alan. <laughs> I guess that's one way of getting somebody's attention. A little deceitful, I think, but it worked, didn't it? But to see, the fact is, if we're open to hearing a word from God, He will definitely present Himself to us. In Exodus 3 and 3, we see Moses said, <clears throat> Wow, this is amazing. Why isn't that bush burning up? i got to go see it. And it says, When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. He said, Moses, Moses, here I am. Moses said, he answered God's call. Moses says, here I am, God. Now, I don't know whether God's presentation of himself to you will be the same and as dramatic as it was to Moses, but he will do something to get your attention. And once he has your attention, then he's ready to speak to you in some way, in some shape, or some form. How else does he get our attention? Well, he makes it clear, like he did with Moses, that we are on holy ground. He told Moses, take off your sandals because you're standing on holy ground. You see, anywhere that God is present is what? Is holy ground. It might be in your car. It might be at the beach while you're in a shower or when you're at church. Wherever God is, is holy. Because what? Because God is holy. And when he makes himself known, it's time to show him reverence, right, and the respect he deserves. Now, some, while some folks are overly particular about forms and practices in, in our religious world, others are much too loose and too casual when we approach God. <clears throat> you see, we've got to remember that the one to whom we're speaking is the creator, the sustainer, not only of our life, but of the whole universe. And guess what? He ain't going to be taken lightly. Alright, so how does God enable us? Well, number two, God will hear and act on what? On our behalf. You know, many, many people think that their petitions to God simply end up in limbo somewhere with a whole bunch of other petitions and God doesn't really have time to listen to all of that. Now, while there are some prayers that are, on, are answered and some that are not, we need to understand that when the circumstances are right, we can expect God not only to hear our request, but to act on it. Sometimes we get too impatient. We want Him to act right away when He knows it's not time for Him to act on our request. 
Or maybe he doesn't think we need to do what we're asking for at all. So let's go to the story and we'll, we'll see what we're talking about here. Exodus chapter 3, verse 6. He says, I am the God of your father, Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. <clears throat> and when Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Verse 7, then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress. You see, the, the Lord does here. It says, I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, <clears throat> the Lord says, I am aware of their suffering. He not only heard about it, but he was aware of what was going on. Verse 8. So I have come down to what? He's going to act on it now. To rescue them from the power of the Egyptians. And what else is he going to do? I'm going to lead them out of Egypt. So he heard it. He's acting upon it. Verse 9. <clears throat> Look, he said, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me. And I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. Now go, Moses, for I am sending you to Pharaoh, and you must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. Now, as the old news broadcaster Paul Harvey would say, here's the rest of the story. <clears throat> now, I just pulled a few phrases out of this text to show us how God hears. He says, I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. He saw it, right? I have heard their cries. He heard it. I'm aware, he's aware of their suffering. But the cries of the people of Israel have reached me. So God knew what was going on. And just, just as God was well aware of the situation for the people of Israel, guess what? He's also well aware of what's going on in our lives. He didn't just suddenly change all of a sudden and doesn't hear anything. If we're suffering, He knows about it. If we're crying for help, He hears us. God knows, He understands, and He emphasizes with our situation, and He's going to act on it. We read the phrase that God hears <clears throat> and understands, but look what else it says, verse three, chapter 3, verse 8. He says, so I've come down to rescue, to lead them out of Egypt. He not only hears, but He acts about it. He wasn't like one of those people... <clears throat> who might listen to the problem, right? But then, does nothing about it. You go to somebody and say, listen, I'm in trouble, I need this, this, and this. Oh, yeah, okay, I hear you, I hear you, man, I hear you. Okay, but I'm telling you because I want you to have me do something. Yes. And so many words they say, well, here we understand, but we ain't going to do nothing. But God hears, He understands, and He acts on our behalf. What's going on in our lives right now that we believe is keeping us from fulfilling God's purpose? Troubles in the home, troubles at a job, troubles that are keeping us from being everything that we could be. Let God know about it. He already knows, but He's not going to do nothing unless you ask Him to. He doesn't force His will on anyone. Maybe we haven't felt that burning passion for God's kingdom we once had. Tell God about it. Maybe we're suffering from a physical or mental illness that limits what we can do. Tell God about it and ask for healing. Whatever the circumstance, God has the ability to hear, to understand, and to act on our behalf. How else can God enable us? Well, God will enable us to, to fulfill His purpose. God had chosen Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. But what happened? Moses came up with excuse after excuse of why he couldn't do it. Look at it, Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. <clears throat> Here's Moses. It says, Moses protested again. Lord, what if they, they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? How am I going to do what you asked me to do? So then God had to perform a miracle and show Moses how to turn his shepherd's staff into a snake and how to make his hand leprous and then whole again. But what happened? Verse 10. Moses pleaded with the Lord, Oh Lord, I'm not very, I'm not good with words. I'm not a good speaker. I never have been, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. 
Verse 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, Who makes a person's mouth? Huh? Who, who decides whether people speak or not? Or hear or not hear or see or not see? Is it not I, said the Lord? Now go, Moses. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you on what to say. Moses again pleaded with God to remove, take this responsibility away from me. So God allowed Moses' brother Aaron to become the mouthpiece or the speaker to whom Moses would speak. Now I don't know about you, but sometimes I see a lot of myself and Moses. One time we're negotiating to buy a church and to buy some land. It was one roadblock after another and took up a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of energy. And finally, we couldn't purchase the property because no one wanted to loan the money to a church with less than 500 members. Then God spoke and said, Why are you concerned about buying a building right now? The building isn't my church. My people are. He said, concentrate on building the flock and teaching them through Bible study and other ministries. And when the time is right, I'll open up the door for where I want my church building to be. I said, okay, God, we tried it our way rather than your way. And we want to be back in your will. And he's been a blessing ever since. We've had the opportunity to bring uh, worship services and Bible study to assistive living centers to people who would normally not be able to go and hear God's Word. We went on mission trips throughout the Caribbean and provided worship uh, services to crews that are on uh, sea vessels for many months and not able to go to their home church. See, God calls us to action, but we come up with excuse after excuse and try to get away from the clear command of God. But you know what? God will meet our excuse every time. <laughs> and He'll give us whatever tools we need to accomplish His will. Whether it's money, spiritual gift, manpower, anything else, God has a big, rich supply up there in order for His kingdom goals to be accomplished, not ours, His. And when we are in line with His thinking, then really it's our goals that are being accomplished also. It's time to get enabled for his service. Look at his promise in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. It says, Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, verse 21, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May He produce in you, through what? Through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to Him. Yes, Lord. All glory to Him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. If you notice here, as well as in the story of Moses, that God is the one who is doing the equipping and the enabling. God is the one who gives us the ability to fulfill His will. It don't depend on us, it's on God. God wants our service and our obedience, but really He's the one that ultimately gives us the ability, right, to do what He wants done. Now there's several observations that we can make from our text before we close. First of all, God is present in everyday life. He's present in the ordinary. He hears and understands whatever situation we find ourselves in. He don't call us to perform a task without giving us the ability to do so. And He starts solving our problems when we quit making excuses. Yeah, Let me say that again. He starts solving our problems when we quit making excuses. Sure. He's ready to equip us at this very moment for the work of His kingdom. And it's really up to us to decide if this is the day we're going to accept His challenge as well as His power, right? Mm -hmm. To get the job done. Yes, now those of you who live out in the country and you see the pickups with the little sign on get her done on the back, now you know what it means. Get her done! Accept his path, challenge, accept his power, and get her done. Amen. 
Want your problem solved? Stop making excuses. If God's calling you, you already got the tools, you already got the ability, just get her done. Amen. How do you learn? God will get your attention, He'll appear in the ordinary, He'll present Himself to you, and He'll make it clear that you're on holy ground. God is waiting to enable us right now. He's presented Himself to us, but does He have your attention? Are you listening to His calling? Do you realize that you're standing on holy ground? Remember, you can't start learning without His enablement. And there's only one way to receive that enablement, and that's through His Son, Jesus Christ. He suffered and died on Calvary's cross just for this very moment. Yes, right here in this place. He did it for you and He did it for me. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, that You have enabled us. And we ask that You would not let us waste that enablement. That we would listen to you. That we would realize that we're standing on holy ground and open our ears and our hearts to the calling that you have for each and every one of us. And stop complaining and claiming we can't do your will, Lord, when you've already equipped us. You've given us everything that we need. Help us not to be like Moses and be stubborn. Help us to be more like you, Lord. To be open and listen and do what you tell us to. You already enabled us. Let us use that enablement to be successful in bringing glory to your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.